Today we're going to be talking about the 10 things that sometimes we forget, but things we need to purchase in a survival situation. You will need all 10 of these items when it comes down to the G-rated version the, when the crap hits the fan. When all else fails and you have to take care of your family, these 10 items can be your life-saving go-to's. And it all starts right now. Spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope. It is a hot one here in Mississippi. It is burning slap up. We've got water on one part of the garden. Uh, we were not actually gonna plant again, but uh, as crazy times are, it makes us think, hey, it's time to plant again. Our corn did great as in tallness, but it did not put off like we were wanting it to. So guess what? We've now planted another version of corn. So this will be our third stand of corn. Hopefully between the three stands, we will get enough for a year. If not, we will keep on growing because we're in the South. Uh, failure sometimes is not a bad thing. Uh, that's not what this video is about today, but remember failure just helps you learn what you could do better. So this time we're doing the three sisters method versus doing the cover crop method with the other. The other two uh, stands of corn, we did a cover crop method where we planted, uh, we used poly tarps. We really tried to enrich the ground with nitrogen. Uh, this time we're actually going to do the, the three sisters method and that's what we did. So we're going to try and see which one does the best. We've got great height on the corn, just didn't put out the good ears that we're wanting. So guess what? We're planning again. And failure is okay sometimes because it helps you be successful and thankful for the successes as they come. All right, so let's jump right into the video. We're going to be talking about 10 things that we, sometimes we forget, but things that you will need as life-saving measures and life-saving tips and tools that can get you through times such as the Great Depression, such as the Great Reset, and ultimately to take care of your family. So number one, it's water filtration. Water filtration is so important. So if you're buying live straws or you're buying Berkey's or you're buying some kind of water catchment system, you need some kind of filtration system there. Uh, what we have seen with things like the Grand Solar Minimum, a uh, Grand Solar Maximum that's supposed to be coming in the next few years, that allows you to see major rains in some areas but also droughts in other areas. We're on the east of the Mississippi, of course, because we're in Mississippi. But what we've seen with the west of the Mississippi, y'all have been in a lot of drier areas and a lot of warmer weather than y'all are typical. Uh, this year we may see some of the same things. But in all cases, if there's a body of water, it's not going to serve you any purpose to try to utilize it. Because if it may water your gardens or water your animals, this lake is wonderful for watering. But uh, it would probably kill me with bacteria if I tried to drink it or make me very, very sick. So you need to find ways to have water filtration, some live straw, some Berkey's, some filtration systems for your water. And that is the end all be all. If you don't have water and you don't have food, uh, then all this other stuff is for naught. So we've talked about food in several other videos, but right now we're talking about water filtration, how important it is. We have live straws. Not only do we have live straws, we have a whole a 30 gallon tub that Life Straw puts out. We're not affiliated with them, but you need to check them out. If you're interested in uh, stuff like the Berkey's or you're interested in water filtration, also now we do have a link to My Patriot Supply. They have an awesome uh, water filtration system, almost like a Berkey, but it's My Patriot Supply version of it. Check it out because it's really good to have. But it comes back to water catchment. Uh, are you catching your water in any way? Uh, or do you have creeks and rivers that are at your excess? Do you have a lake at your excess? Uh, like our water well, we use a we have a hand pump just in case the power and the grid goes down. We can pump all our water out. We're in a very low area, and water is not um, not a major issue for us because we have a lot of it around us because we're kind of at the start of a creek and also a real big uh, river basin almost. So we see a lot of water here. Now that doesn't mean that it won't ever go away from us. So weather plays it plays into that, climate plays into that, but the main thing is, is having water and having an excess, and not only having an excess, having ways to filter it. Number two is garden tools and supply. Uh, we tend to see if we have to get into more of a, you know, victory garden style, going back to our roots, gardening, living off our land, you have to have ways to make the land a garden. So if we don't have our tillers or we don't have our hose or we don't have our shovels or our rakes, a lot of those things may get balled up and then all of a sudden you're trying to do this with bare hands or with animals. If you have animals, great, 
but ultimately I want I want several rakes I want several shovels I want several hoes I want several garden implements and garden tools that can help me break the ground up make the ground like it needs to be if that's poly tarps or if that's some kind of fertilization if that's some kind of garden tools which is what we're kind of aiming towards on this number two you need to make sure you have everything you need to build the garden because if you don't have what you need you'll never be able to break the ground enough to get something in there. Now say you have raised beds or say you do container gardens. Well then you need to make sure you have enough soil. You need to make sure you have enough pots that can get you through because when it becomes a major issue in our world, you saw during the pandemic how hard it was to get certain things garden tools will go pretty quickly and nowadays if you can find older garden tools antique garden tools that are pure real steel they'll last forever the ones we're buying right now from the garden centers and the walmarts and the home depots they're not good quality they will break over time they will rust they will fall to pieces the the wood or the fiberglass uh, shaft of it will go and be broken so I challenge you pick up a few extra you can go a lot of times to estate sales or you can go to rummage sales or garage sales and you can pick up some garden tools because people just want to get rid of them so I challenge you have the smaller sets for the smaller gardens uh, but have the bigger stuff the bigger implements and the bigger tools you need to make sure that you have a way to break ground and take care of yourself to build the garden well as we're standing by the garden number three is actually seeds we tend to see a lot of people want to plant and today i went to the the i went to a feed store a co-op here in our town and it was packed full of people trying to buy seed stars trying to buy seeds uh, trying to buy implements for their gardens and it just kind of broke my heart and i was it just kind of got a point where i got up to the register and i was buying something uh, that was so uh unimportant i guess you could say and i said man there's a lot of people here and she said it's been like this especially the last three years we can't get stuff and we can't keep stuff enough on the shelves everybody's buying it uh my page supply uh, there's a lot of companies especially if you look into hoss tools that's affiliated with us it's down below look at ways to buy in bulk and buy mess loads of seeds to put up put them in a cool dry place we usually put ours in mylar bags or uh, bags that are sealed we'll put them in a in a very dark cabinet even in a cooler area to make sure they're safe for the next year we've planted seeds over and over and over also that goes back to seed saving we have videos on seed saving but the main idea is we talk to water number one two is garden implements and tools that you're needing well you have to have those two things to plant well planting is what you got to plant you got to have seeds to plant so number three would be buying your seeds having a surplus a lot of times you can even go on amazon and go on some places and find a, um, what they call an emergency seed saving kit it allows you to buy a big bulk package now some of those things you may not like to eat but guess what in our survival mentality you'll eat just about anything so number three seeds number four if you don't like raising animals for food understandable uh we believe in it it is a threadbare part of our uh, our farm actually we raise 100 percent of our animals on farm 100 percent of our meat comes off farm but this is what i would say even if you're not raising animals to butcher and and raise yourself for your family raise breeding pair of animals if it's breeding quail if it's breeding rabbits if it's breeding pigeons if it's breeding sheep if it's breeding chickens, if it's breeding whatever animal that you have that can be bartered for you for food. So even if you're not uh, you know, processing your rabbits or chickens or pigs or uh, sheep or, or quail, grow them if you have a chance to. Have animal husbandry. We preach animal husbandry. You have to have sustainable males on farm or sustainable males at your home to make sure that you have a breeding stock of something. I'm not talking about dogs and cats. I'm not talking about your pet, uh, you know, parakeet. I'm talking about something that can make food for someone else. Having those at your excess allows you to have a bartering tool for other things you need. Money may not be what we want it to be in the future. Commodities and food may be what we exchange and barter and sell. That is what is gonna be worth something when it comes down to it. Uh, I can't eat a dollar, but I can eat, you know, a bird. I can't eat a dollar, but I can eat peanut butter. I can't eat a dollar, but I can have seeds to grow. The main concern is is having something to barter. So this this point here with animals, breeding animals, 
even if you're not processing and eating them breed them and you can sell and you can barter and that is a way that you can take care of your family all right number five we're gonna walk down here to this beautiful beautiful lake we have on our property we are blessed to have this lake we have a creek running it's spring fed and creek fed so this lake pretty much doesn't go down especially if you go back in old vlog videos this area right here we did have um a, a issue on our dam at one time and we had to get it fixed because we want to keep this lake it's too well stocked naturally with good fish so that would bring me to this point of number five you need to make sure that you have fishing supply fishing supply is one of the cheapest things you can buy but be what but will be what a lot of people will go back and buy because they know it's as cheap as it is buy several fishing poles fishing poles you can pick up for literally 20 or 30 dollars you're not trying to catch a shark you're trying to catch a little perch or a bass or a brim or any kind of fish that you can get that's two or three or four pounds to be able to again to eat or to barter with someone else so buy some fishing supply get you a little tackle box pick up a little bait you can pick up baits rooster tails and worms and things like that for two and three dollars a piece buy ten of them buy two rods and reels buy a little tackle box put it up for if you never like to fish you may like to fish when it comes down to eating and taking care of your family and yourself so buy fishing supply put it up keep it safe and know it's there just in case number six it's probably one of the most important when we talk about our bug out bags our our our, our home if you watch a lot of our homestead tours that we've done uh, and our pantry tour we talk about this but you need to have medical supply you need to have a stockpile of medical supply hygiene and taking care of ourselves first age is is just as important as eating we have to make sure we have everything we need now so this goes back to the point of first if you're on some kind of medicine that your body has to have if you're on some kind of uh, cancer drug or you're on some kind of heart medicine you're on some kind of thyroid medicine something that you have to have to live buy as much as you can in excess that your doctor will allow if not you need to make sure that you have that always filled up always together and, and making sure you even have the natural elements of it too so say you take a prescription i would be looking up herbs and remedies just in case you're not able to get some of those prescriptions that you can learn uh, if it's things like uh, having surgical scissors having uh, ways to glue we, we we have a vet bond we have a, a different glues medical glues that you can utilize if we ever had a big you know a big tear on our arm we could you know sew it back up or we can close it back we have butterfly strips we have tons of band-aids and galls those things are important because when we're out in the wilderness and we're out in the wild especially like us we're on the farm all the time so we're jumping fences we're maneuvering over things so we need medical supplies to take care of us just in case what can happen uh, another option is having medicine having medicines that you need over-the-counter stockpile a lot of those things because a lot of those things you could not find during the pandemic so have a lot of just things like Tylenol Aleve aspirin uh, Bayer's things that you may need just in case one day uh, ibuprofens if it be cold and sick flu medicines whatever it may be you need to start piling it up and having it at your excess now we have a link below for Jace Medical I challenge you if you can buy um, a, a whole load of antibiotic prescriptions that they sell they'll get your information they send it straight to your door in a package that is not uh, identified so you can be able to get it very confidential but we we believe in what Jace Medical is doing by giving prescriptions sold to you directly to your door without having to go through any kind of health uh, professional so look into them you need to have medical supply you need to have things that you typically wouldn't think about not just medicines surgical scissors galls uh, making sure you're using butterfly strips you know bonding agents all those kind of things are good to have even down to your alcohol and peroxide make sure you have those things in a supply to where you can put them in a bug out bag you can put them in a safe place keep them in a cool dry place that way you know where they're at and how you can access them because when it comes down to it you may not can go to the doctor that easy seven through ten may be a little a little sensitive subjects for a lot of people but i want to i want to bring them up seven would be liquor now I, I don't we're not drinkers now what i'm saying is liquor goes along with medicine supplies and and herbal remedies uh, you need to know how to make tinctures we have videos on that and you need to look into foraging and ways that you can build certain elements of health for yourself 
Liquor helps you build tinctures. Liquor uh, helps you, it's, a, it's an antiseptic, it cleans. You, you need to have a higher proof or higher index liquor to keep in your cabinets. Also, along with it being an antiseptic and also a way that you can make tinctures, a way that you can <laughs> numb pain, uh, it is also a bartering tool. Uh, as much as we hate to admit it, people uh, get hooked on a lot of things and liquor is one of them. So it's a bartering tool just like the breeding pair of animals when it comes down to taking care of your family. By having a lot of things that you're excess, liquor is not a bad thing to have. Put in your supplies to have it for a lot of things. Antiseptic and tinctures most importantly, but even a bartering tool and a way that you can take care of your family is by owning liquor. That's, that's kind of a crazy statement to say, but it is true. Again, another uh, kind of controversial topic, I told you the next few were gonna be that way, is contraceptive. You need to have things that we don't think about. This is what this kind of is about. It's contraceptive. We, we, things are, people are gonna be people. And so as bad as this world may get in a survival mentality, the last thing you need is, is pregnant mamas, nursing mamas, and that's even biblical. Uh, woe to the one who is, is pregnant or nursing. We see it right now with, uh, you know, the baby formula shortage. It's important to, if you are planning on having children, have a goal, stockpile, you know, if you're not breast, if you're, you know, your wife is not breastfeeding, you need to make sure that you are putting up a lot of baby formula and things that your baby would need, baby food or snacks, things that the baby can eat. Uh, that's important to think about. So if you are planning a family, prep like that prep for diapers wipes and of course baby formula uh, if you're not then you need to have contraceptives or a situation where you know that that's been taken care of so i know that's a hard subject and again a very touchy subject uh, sometimes that might not bother a lot of people sometimes that's not affecting a lot of people but for younger individuals that are worried about surviving and prepping and nature uh, humans will be humans have contraceptive put into your plan. As I told you, we have all these new beds planted. We're, pl we're trying to grow as much food as we can. So we're gonna be moving some water as we talk. I kind of go into this corner looking. Nine and 10 go together. The last two, we're gonna bring them together because ultimately, again, very uh, controversial, but it's just something you've gotta have, is guns and ammo would be number nine. That is something that uh, you need to stockpile, uh, not only for your safety. I, I don't wanna say that we're, a, uh, worried about someone coming on our property but at the same time if times get tough then you need to worry about somebody coming on your property it's not about anything but knowing that you have it at your excess is very important now let's talk about it on the other aspect by having guns and ammo it allows you to know that if worse comes to worse and you have to harvest an animal or you have to go hunting uh, if you have to utilize it for a predator say you have these beautiful pigs but we're worried about coyotes or wolves or some kind of a varmint coming in a rodent getting into our gardens that's causing us to not have food you have guns and ammo to make sure that you can take care of not only yourself but the animals that you're raising for your food uh, we believe in taking care of ourselves we believe in the freedoms that we have but we also believe in feeding ourselves too so not only do we want to take care of our family we need guns and ammo, utilize if needed on farm or to protect our farm. So number nine is guns and ammo. Now that brings me to point 10, a bow and arrow. Same principle as the guns and ammo or the fishing supplies. Unlike uh, ammo, once you shoot it, unless you're reloading it, it's gone. Once it's shot, it's gone. You're not gonna reuse that ammo again. That's why I love bow and arrows and, and being able to hunt with bow and arrows because if you're good at it you're going to shoot something those arrows don't go away now there's times arrows will get torn up there's times they will get broke they'll get dry rotted the tops will mess up the feathers will mess up so have supplies to fix that but like fishing it's things that you can use over and over and over again if you're used to carrying three arrows with a bow then I would say challenge you by 20 or 30, 40 arrows to have at your in excess to practice with, but to have and replace as you need. Uh, we try to not lose arrows, but it happens. But have a bow and arrow, learn it. I'm not saying you have to be the best archer in the world 
or the best shooter in the world or the best fisherman in the world you don't have to be a pro at any of that but to take care of yourself all those aspects are very very good to have and to build those life skills to take care of your family a bow and arrow very 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 good to have in your tools and in a survival situation at your home i know we've talked about a lot from gardening to having tools to garden, to having contraception, to having some kind of ways and means to take care of our families with uh, guns or with ammunition or with bows and with fishing supply, medical supply, it's all over the place. But we hear so many times to stock up on foods and, 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 and waters, that's all good. Keep doing that. This video though is to say, you know, other than food and water and shelter, what else do I need? these 10 items we truly believe would be great to have you need to start stockpiling these just like you do food uh, when we go somewhere and we see a deal on arrows we buy them if we go in somewhere and we see that there's a deal on a water filtration system we get it if we see that aiden loves to fish my oldest son loves to fish so if he goes out there and fishes and he hangs a line and we may lose one bait and we may still have a hundred baits in our tackle box next time we go to walmart or bass pro we may pick up a three dollar bait because we want to make sure we have an excess to take care of our family if it really did come down to it so i hope this video helps please tell me what you think about a lot of these survivor videos we are trying our hardest to not just be another uh, doomsday doom and gloom crap hit the fan channel we're trying to show you innovative ways to take care of your family but not only that all these things are life skills and good things to just have it's good to just have medical supply it's good to have water filtration systems even if nothing bad happens in this world to have things and means and ways to keep stuff that's not just food and water and to have tools to, at your disposal it's great because no matter what we go through, bad weather, good weather. Wars, good years of abundance or bad years of famine or no water or drought. These are just good things to have because there will be times of bad recessions and depressions. And there will be times of, you know, conspiracies of uh, resets happening. Uh, everybody looks out for themselves more than anything when we and we've seen that in the pandemic people looked out for themselves more than anybody else and I would challenge you to build a community but when it comes down to it you have to take care of your family and these 10 tools we do believe will help guys thank you so much for watching God bless 